Number 12, find the components of the total velocity along a set of perpendicular axes rotated 30 degrees counterclockwise relative to those in figure 3.55. All right, so first take a look at figure 3.55, and this vector represents the resultant vector. So what would be the components of that resultant vector? So here would the, uh, that would be, uh, blah, 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 blah. That would be the x component, and this would be the y component. Okay, so let's just draw them simply um, on the page, all right? So let's first create a set of axes, all right? So let's do this and this, and now let's create the triangle in there. All right, we'll put it in red. So the triangle looks like it would be something that looks like that. Come straight down, and here would be the x component, right? So now what do we know about this triangle? We know that the uh, the hypotenuse was 6.72. Whoops, got to change that, 6.72. We also know that the angle in here, right, if you look back to the picture, right, remember that this was the overall resultant triangle. The angle in here, right, is going to be the addition of the 26 and a half and the 22 and a half. Okay, so the angle in here going back to the picture on the left hand side would be 49. Okay, great. So now uh, this would be the x component and this would be the y. But what they want to know, they don't want to know that. They want to know that uh, what are the components if I were to rotate the axes 30 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so first let's draw a new set of axes rotated approximately 30 degrees. So just bear with me, I'm gonna to try to do this as accurately as I can. So that would be the, this would represent the Y axis, okay? The positive Y axis rotated 30 degrees, right? That's the positive Y there. So that looks like it would be about 30 degrees rotated, right, counterclockwise. Okay, and then let me draw now the other one, the X axis. So let's see, hopefully I can Get it through the origin. Mm, let me try it again. That's better. Okay, so now this axis uh, represents over here is the, on the right hand side, this is the positive X, right? That's the positive X. And this was the, the black one represented the old positive X and I rotated that 30 degrees. Okay, great. Now think about this. If I rotated this 30 degrees here, 30 degrees, doesn't that tell me the angle in here? Yeah, it does, right? And this angle out here would be the same as the angle in here, would be the same as the angle in here, etc. would be the same as the angle in here. So now let's think. So this angle now is 30 degrees, 30 degrees. The old angle, right, the old angle used to be 49. So let's first draw the new triangle, okay? Meaning the, the, the new angle in here should be 49 minus 30, right? But let me first draw the new triangle. So the new triangle here is still the vector. That's the same. But now the difference is, I'm not gonna, I have to draw now a line straight down and that's perpendicular to the positive, the new positive x-axis. So it's going to look something like this. Something and let me straighten it out a little bit, something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to now, let me continue here, bring this line on out. There we, eh, let me make it a little better. That's better. Okay, that black triangle represents the new, this is the new component triangle. Okay, so now, I still have the same resultant vector here, but the angle in here has changed now, right? What's the new angle? Remember, it'll be 49 minus 30. I think we can see that fairly clearly, right? The whole angle used to be 49. I rotated the axis, so now it was 30 degrees. So the new or the difference between the two should just be simply 49 minus 30, which comes out to be about 19. Okay, great. So this angle in here now is 19 degrees. Now, how do I solve 
for remember this line here represents my x component and this line over here represents my y component so how do i solve for them well remember i know the hypotenuse i know the angle and i'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle therefore i would be using cosine to find the x so cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse Cosine of 19 is equal to the positive x value over 6.72. Simply do your cross multiplication. Cosine of 19 times 6.72. And that works out to be 6.35. So we got 6.35, and that'll be in meters. Wonderful. Then, to find now the y component here, remember, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle that is opposite of the side of interest, therefore I'd be using sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine of now my 19 degrees is equal to the positive y value or y component over 6.72. Simply do your cross multiplication. So sine of 19 times 6.72 is 2.19. So we've got a value of 2.19 meters. And that would be that. So those would be the uh, components of the... Uh, total velocity vector if the axes were rotated 30 degrees counterclockwise. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this made sense. Um, thanks for taking a little extra time with me here to draw the pictures out. I think it makes uh, the visuals help uh, make more sense. So uh, I definitely appreciate your time. And uh, please do subscribe. It definitely helps us out tremendously. Until next time.